Lois Lane issue 10 sees Lois hiding out in a motel as she writes her story while Renee tells Jessica if Lois Lane thinks she's a witch, then she's a witch. Jessica wonders where Lois is, but all Renee will tell her is that she's working and Renee doesn't know where, only that Lois told her Jessica was a powerful witch and she can take care of their assassin problem. Jessica wants to help, but she clearly has been mistaken for someone else. Renee says that Lois is kind of counting on her to save her, but Jessica tells them she doesn't know how and doesn't understand how how to. She knows it is in her mind, but she doesn't know how to find it. Jessica breaks down as Clarice tells Renee to let Jessica know. Renee knows that it's not for her to explain since she barely understands it herself, but with no other choice, Renee begins telling Jessica about the multiverse and how with every decision they make, there is an infinite number of other decisions, all of their own universes, which make up a number so large that things that should be impossible become improbable and soon inevitable. She tells Jessica the story about the man who thinks he is a butterfly in his dreams, but when he wakes, he's just a man. She says the problem is the man is both the butterfly and the man, and that's what Jessica is. She is both, and so is Renee and Clarice and Lois, but they are all just so much more, and she can call it the multiverse or parallel universes, but it's all real, all lives that they can't seem to remember, which doesn't mean they didn't happen, and their problem is the same as the butterfly story. The Areas blur and splinter, and it doesn't matter why that's happening, but a wall comes down on the multiverse when they begin to leak into one another. And one night, you could go to sleep as a GCPD cop and wake up the next morning realizing that it's all true, much like what happened to Renee. Jessica begins to understand the situation, realizing the Jessica Midnight who grew up in Wolverhampton merged with a Jessica Midnight from another universe. Clarice says that that is what happened to her, Renee, and the nun herself as well. Jessica thinks that that's how Clarice knew where to find her, but Renee says that Lois was the one who actually knew, like how she knew what would happen to her, Clarice and Jessica. Jessica wants to know how Lois knows, but Renee doesn't even know that, and maybe Lois isn't actually their universe's Lois, and some other alternate reality Lois. Renee says that this doesn't matter, but if it's all true, then this Jessica Midnight is the only one they need to stop the kiss. Lois continues to tap away at her story, calling her husband who arrives in the blink of an eye, commenting on how she's really deep in the weeds and in a junk food frenzy. Lois reminds him that he said he was free for a call, which implies a phone call, but Clark says that it doesn't mean that at all anymore, and call has evolved from shorthand for telephone call to mean actually visiting someone. Clark takes a seat, but Lois reminds him that she's working, wondering what her husband wants or whether he's there just for a snack. He tells her he'll be right back, and as fast as he leaves, he returns, saying there was an oil refinery fire. Clark says that he wanted to make sure she was alright, since Bruce told him about the kiss and how magic is involved. Lois says that they have this covered, as again, Clark takes off to help a suicide jumper. He returns knowing he hates having to sit this one out, and yet again he takes off, but when he returns, Lois stops him, saying kiss won't find her unless she wants her to, and locating a target isn't where the kiss's occult abilities lay. Lois reassures her husband that physically she is okay okay, but emotionally and mentally she isn't that great. Clark wants her to tell him and Lois says that it's just hard right now and he should know the feeling better than anyone else, wanting to do more and fix it, but feeling powerless to do so. Clark says that he knows that feeling, since all his abilities don't change that, but sometimes all they can do is point out the problems and hope people are paying attention to them, and that they will do what needs to be done to fix them. Lois says that it feels like right now people aren't paying attention and they are the only ones paying attention, so Clark tells her that they just need to shout all the louder. At the Drake Hotel, Jessica doesn't know if the spell will work, but Renee reassures her that it will, since the kisser's MO is to work close to confirm the kill, so she will be there. Jessica didn't mean that, she knows that that will work, but it's akin to remembering what you had for last night's dinner and how it tasted. Luckily Jessica remembers what she had for dinner and Renee hopes that she is ready. Jessica says that she is and so they get to work but Clarice asks Jessica how she's doing mentally. The woman says that she's mostly numb, but glad she finally has some answers and wasn't losing her mind. She asks Clarice about what this happening to her and Renee wondering if it's only them and Clarice knows that there definitely would be others and surely everyone in the world would be under the effect of every multiverse. She thinks that they are particularly affected thanks to their certain actions or personas in these other realities or worlds, such as Jessica being a witch and a spy for checkmate. Jessica asks 
asks what the nun was, and she says that, that she was an instrument of God's mercy. Renee contacts Lois, saying that they are ready, so Lois tells him to go. Lois calls and orders a pizza, using her credit card to do so. Later that night, a gun-toting assassin enters the hotel room. Lois is awake, however, asking why the assassin thinks she's an idiot. Kiss says that she doesn't think that, knowing that the pizza order and the credit card charge was uncharacteristically sloppy of her, which means that Lois is laying a trap for her. Lois secretly texts Renee, and in Chicago, Jessica gets underway, suddenly stopping the ritual since she forgot about conversion of mass, not knowing how much the kiss weighs. There isn't any time to fix it, and Renee tells Jessica to do it, as they listen to the kiss readying to shoot Lois. The kiss says that this isn't personal, as Lois begins to get worried. Suddenly, the kiss is teleported away to Chicago, while Clarice is put in her place in Lois's hotel room. As the kiss is teleported away, she shoots her gun, which when getting to Chicago, hits Renee in the stomach, leaving Jessica all alone with the assassin. Lois Lane issue 10 really leaned into the wacky comic book stuff with Renee explaining the existence of a multiverse and alternate realities and how they work. The pages of her explaining it were really well done and it's great to see what you would consider lower level characters getting into conversations about multiversal shenanigans, stuff usually relegated to, you know, the Batmans and the Supermans and the Justice Leagues of the world. I enjoyed Lois's plan as well to catch the kiss of death, which was in itself very comic bookish and a very comic bookish way of doing things, which was a great different way to take the series, which so far has been pretty quote unquote realistic, mainly focusing on Lois investigating stuff and how her job works. So returning to sort of comic book stuff with occult assassins and multiversal shenanigans is really cool. I'm excited as we enter the final two issues and how Lois will succeed in her case, as well as how her story will pan out. I'm going to give this issue a 9.5 out of 10.